Uh, hi everyone, meet Kartika. She is what I would say a star in a nutshell. Uh, I'm not going to talk about uh, the um, labels on her because I don't want her um, advice to be colored by her background. But I just wanted to mention that she is a very accomplished product manager in a fang company in the Bay Area. Well, if if I could add to that with one line of self-introduction, I am um, typically the same person as you, trying to decide whether, when, and how I should move to India, um, and struggling with the same questions as you. So, uh, really happy to be part of here, and I hope to learn from you as well. Um, yeah. Great. Are you struggling with the question? Like you don't look like you're struggling with it. <laughs> you are already well, doing. I, I have a knack of sounding more confident, even though I might be confused. <laughs> <laughs> so I, since I work with a lot of NRIs, I've seen the whole spectrum of confusion, and uh, you seem on the. Uh, I won't say you don't seem confused, but you're definitely doing the right things to drive away that confusion, which is trying out things and getting into action. to find out what you like and what you don't like no completely agree yeah that's that's my style to at least try and test and put into action so that that eliminates the variables so i'm going to cut to the chase and get to the core of the the questions i want to ask you for a little bit you've been working from what we call uh, as rural india on the outskirts of uh, you know a larger city in tamil nadu can you talk a little bit about the challenges you're facing especially on the technical side like internet and you know just amazon or something like that things that you were used to uh interesting so let me let me start with a little bit context so um i am from um from this really typical village that they show in like you know indian movies like oh. the farmlands and uh, coconut trees and uh, yeah, i'm running through that kit <laughs> exactly <laughs> exactly like running around trees kind of uh, typical huh. scene so um for me this was a really once in a lifetime opportunity to be working from here um got me a good chance to connect to the roots what i really was surprised was about the internet connection so um i have the bsnl connection um prior like when i used to try this about a, you know two years ago it was really bad like spotty um would like fluctuate during the time but this time bsnl has done like a really good job point is internet can come to surprise you so don't um hesitate uh, to try the um fiber or even dongle uh And especially if you're working in night hours like US time zone I think it's a advantage that you have really good internet so mm. that was actually a surprise for me but coming to the difficulty I would say one issue that at least I face is the power cut <laughs> so um in a day like on average like there are like three or four times like the power switches between lines and which means that in a meeting you could go dark so one thing at least I use is inverters Oh. uh so that i have smooth uninterrupted in internet flow as well huh. um i think that's a big boon uh, even though i am from a village i think amazon and flipkart all deliver the only thing is that delivery times are longer um so for example when my laptop went bad or um i had to shift it uh, ship things from the company it take it took a much longer than if you were in the major cities so oh. um so basically you're saying from. though if you want something exotic like say for example almond um vegan cookies uh guess why i'm asking because i just ordered them you're saying that it is it will be delivered it'll just take a little longer than it would in a larger city so okay so it looks like internet is kind of sorted for you it's not really a top concern and you've also backed up all other external uh, dependencies with something internal like a a, a ups or a, in an inverter uh, can you talk a little bit about uh, you know uh, this the fact that a lot of nris feel like they should go to a village and do a startup there like uh, i think it's shridhar bembu uh, the uh, the founder of zoho i don't know if i got his name right he works out of a village in tamil nadu it's just so wonderful uh, you know looking at his tweets and his photos and experiences can you uh, visualize how that would look for an nri who wants to return and work from a tier two or tier two or three city and make a startup of their own there like if you're if you're into the rural aspect of your life it's as i said once in a lifetime opportunity because i can just walk you through my day right hmm. in in the night time i'm working us hours um you know logging into this laptop like the way i am right now but the moment the sun rises it's like lush green with peacocks uh, making their like the tropical birds starting the day 
with like roosters waking you up to um, really like fresh feel and fresh produce, it, it feels like as if I just teleported into a different world. Wow. So the energy, the positivity that you get just from your surroundings, uh -huh. uh, the freshness of the food, nice. especially if you have family here, the fact that you can connect to your relatives and family, it gives me at least a lot of positive energy. Um, so, but again, that depends on if you're a person who's looking for this kind of connection, this kind of like going back to your roots. Um, it's great. The only couple of things that you might want to think if you're doing it for a little bit long term is if you have family, then in a way your kids go to education, like that mm -hmm. aspect. Um, obviously the schools are great, but you know, the extracurriculars, the camps, the, uh, the amount of exposure you would have um, in city versus here, like National Olympiad kind of training camps are going to be limited. IIT kind of training is going to be limited. So that angle is where I think if you have family and kids, if you're single or a couple, um, I think it's, it's yeah, like, it's you should limit. try it out. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so a lot of people talk about FIRE, uh, which is fi uh, financially independent, retire, retire early. Uh, so what do you think about retiring in, in a rural place that you don't originally belong to? Because a lot of people grow up in cities and maybe they want to choose a place somewhere and be like, you know, let's go and retire here, like Goa. Any thoughts around that? I think it's just totally on personal taste, right? Like I'm a nomadic person. So even if I retire, I would try different places, but like not stick to the same rural. But I think like when I'm going to try, I would definitely try like semi urban, urban, touristy spot totally nice. isolated like I, I mean I would try and like always keep that mind that I can always move if I don't like it so mm -hmm. I think this is definitely something you should try like I mean people go to um, Thailand Cambodia and try the rural experience or go to Hawaii which is like completely different from the commercial uh, Vegas kind of experience so it, it's mm -hmm. worth trying um, and I think if you're if you're into nature even if you don't know the place even if you don't know the language give it a week or two and you'll start falling in love with it nice so what kind of mental makeup should an nri have if they have to choose this kind of life the reason i'm asking this question is because a lot of nris uh, have certain expectations from india after having lived abroad for so long so for example they're like you know i don't want anyone to interfere in my personal business don't ask me personal questions what kind of mental makeup do they need to have uh, to sort of survive, if that's the right word, uh, in in India or a rural area? Okay, if it is with family and rural area, I think um, no matter how much the village has evolved, there will still be traditions and mm. functions and rituals that are, you know, very on the other side of like what you haven't seen. Um, so you might be slightly, um, you know, standing out in those functions, um, right. depending on the way you dress to depending on the way you talk, like it's, it's not something you can't change, but your mindset has evolved due to your stay outside India as mm. well, right? It, it has changed differently than the evolution that has happened if were you in, in the same place. Mm. So there will always be difference of opinions. Um, uh, it could be like positive, negative, or so just having a lot more open-mindedness and, I would say immunity for people judging you because <laughs> if you're not skinned, you know, if you're very sensitive about what each and everybody would have opinion on you, it independent of whether you're rural or urban family is going to give you opinions. And if you can't like filter off what you want and what you don't want, I think it's, um, it right. could be a little bit troublesome, but the positive side is as well is you have so many people to care about. So if you're, needing anything you're not one person who has to go back go alone and you know right. figure out the process because especially in rural areas because the process is not like really straightforward if you want a gas connection to yeah. if you want um, electricity repair it's all a network and I think you should use that network to your advantage of nice. getting things done in a much more smoother way so the mental mindset to be broad-minded a little bit immune to others reaction and willing to let people into your life, I think will definitely help you go a okay. long way. So it sounds like you have to be at a either at a certain phase in your life where uh, certain things are at a priority, or you have to be a type of person who is uh, becomes is open to becoming immune to such questions. So one of the two, um, probably I, not. I'm the, actually gonna. Huh. Yeah, so I'm actually gonna quote you your book back home on this, right? I I I really like the line where you read. 
Um, it, well, it talks about family, but but the line was, it's not the kids who have to adjust; it's the adults who have to adjust, right? So, <laughs> I think our mindset is a mental blocker for right. any decision and choice that we live with. And if you're able to give a little bit more freedom there, things can just turn around. Uh, so my uh, next question is a little bit about uh, work. You know, by continuing to work while you are uh, in India for a little bit, what advice would you give to an NRI who wants to move to India temporarily? How do you advise them to approach their company to make that happen? Um, I'm going to take a little bit detour, answer the first half tangentially, and then come back to the actual question okay. here. Right. The reason is. If you would ask me why haven't you moved yet back to India, hmm. one of the top reasons for me is the work, right? The the yep. the project that I get the in the really depth um, and the control and exciting areas because there's a lot of projects that usually companies um, keep it at their um, you know the the headquarters level rather than outsource it. So the the advantage that I get about staying at the headquarters of um, in, in the US makes it very interesting. So that ties me to the question, like, if you were to come here, you could try multiple different options. One is you could work with your manager to work from India. Obviously, it means you're working all night. It's not an easy task. Um, obviously, you'll have to be really particular about the kind of schedule that you're on, like no meetings after 3 a.m. kind of like theory schedule. But if you could work with your manager, which I think is much easier for a larger company like the Googles and Facebooks, rather than um, these, like the startups could be a little bit more tricky. That's one issue from mm -hmm. the manager point. The second is you could try rotation. And this is, again, more advantages for a big company with multiple outsources, where you could bungee jump into a certain project for a limited time, try rotation. Um, like, for example, it could be the same role or a different uh, role, like you're a product manager, but you want to bungee jump into a PMM role or whatever you want to try, you could maybe bungee jump the role or the project, try it as a rotation here and then go back. Hmm. That's the second option. Um, the, the third option, I think, is about taking a sabbatical, which depends on the phase that you are in. If you are really have been working long for the company, take a sabbatical, come here, try something totally different, totally different of your tech world. Maybe try something that's completely your passion. You haven't had time to do. That's the third route. But all of these three are dependent on legal issues, right? If you're a H1B holder or a green card or a citizen, because sometimes we take it for granted. Yeah. And I think that's also the fear that ties people back. Like if you're an H1B, will you have permission or not? So different companies and different visas have their own requirement, but all of them do give you certain time frame, at least up to a couple of months to work from an, um, well, not work, but be in another country whether you could work or not, again, needs a legal advice. So that's the biggest thing that if you could solve for it, hmm. company-wise, you can try all the different options, especially if you're at the big techs. In all of these options, to me, it sounds like if you have, if you're focused on your career, your career may get hit a little bit in any of these options. Do you feel so? Um, it, it, I would say rather than a hit, I would say a small, um, you know, trial session for the longer term, because you could also spin it in a different way. Yeah. Your experience in India, especially if it is in a different role, you could spin it back if you're going back to the job. Like I did that during my uh, B-school practice. I actually yeah. interned in India yes. for about um, almost five months in different roles that I wouldn't do, like corporate strategy, consulting. Mm -hmm. And I used that to show the diversity in my resume and my experience nice. so that when I went back, not only am I in this in experience and in depth in that particular technical world, but I did try other areas just to gain the perspective. So you could spin it. The second is if you're working from India, your health could be affected if you're working all night. So that is nice. the other hit that you should plan for, right? Like all night up, and sometimes in the daytime, you're like, and if you have a family, it just gets even difficult. So that's the other thing. But other than that, I see it more for a temporary, at least as a good thing to try out right. for the longer term game. I don't know if you have examples of other people who may have come here temporarily. Did their salary get adjusted? So again, depends on the situation. If it is a sabbatical, that's a different story. Yeah. Um, if you're, if you're doing a temporary role, again, 
all of these answers change because I'm speaking from a big tech perspective. So please take it with a pinch of yep. salt. Yep. I'm also talking from a co-wide perspective where companies like Google mm. were extremely grateful for letting us work remotely, yeah. um, you know, across countries if you're stuck. Um, so everything changes with this perspective. Yeah. But I think one positive thing about, there, there's a lot of negative things, but one positive thing about co-wide is the flexibility to work remotely. Yep. And so that can protect your um, salary as well, depending on the time zone. Um, like big techs usually have certain time frame up to which it's considered okay. But after that, you might have to adjust your salary to the geo region that you're present in. Um, if you're going on paid leave, unpaid leave, again, the salaries are different. But for shorter time frame, it's much more easier. For longer time frame, obviously, you need to pay taxes and take the uh, work authorization for the country that you're going to be in. Uh, having had a taste like uh, of life in India, you also had it during your internship. Every time you go back to the US, how will you differently lead your life in the US uh, when after you do these stints in India and go back? I think it reminds me of what I really loved in India and whether I want to come back to try it, which means that the choices that I make hmm. is going to be prepared for either ending. Whether I want to continue to stay in US or whether I want to come back to India, I need to plan for either weeks. So one, let, let me let me give you a very specific answer. Hmm. I like to reevaluate my both professional and personal standing every two to three years. Like two to three years is an average promotion cycle across most companies. So two to three years, I think about, hey, do I stay in the same team? Do I move companies? Do I move areas? Or do I actually come back, think about, you know, moving back to India? So that perspective gets reinforced every time I visit India and I get touch base, like refresh back with my connection. Um, it helps me overcome my inertia, overcome the comfort zone that you're in for now, and constantly reminds me that, hey, there is this other alternative world that I always have to keep planning for. Very interesting. So viewers who are uh, viewing this, please remember this gold of information that Kartika has given you. What advice would you give to NRIs who feel that they're stuck and they can't make it happen for themselves? Uh, and some of them feel, wonder if they're making excuses to not uh, come to India. Um, I definitely think they're not excuses um, because for each person when, our, when they are in their own shoes, their issues, their problems seem to be the absolute, you know, the big hurdle in front of them, which is fair. That's how human mind is, right? Mm. Like my problems may seem very small to somebody externally. Right. But having said that, it depends on what you want, right? If like there are, there are two kinds of people, right? I mean, yes, I mean, there are multiple kinds, but let, let's, let's generalize it to one person who always wants to try something new and take the trade off, which may not be the right decision for, for everybody, but for them. Yeah. So if, for example, you're stuck with kids, you're, uh, you're stuck with a uh, family, there are, you would have to make some trade-off, right? Try it. Don't try it as a permanent solution. Like don't assume that you coming to India means you have to stay here. Try yeah. keeping both the doors open and then make a shift. So maybe try summer vacation with the kids in India, if that's possible. Try a summer camp in India if you want to still keep your kids on the same education goal. Um, I don't know if there's rotation programs with international schools that would let you try some school in India that like for kids purpose. Again, it, there are other questions on what would you do with your house that you're still paying for mortgage? Can you give it to a property management, get the right render? So fork out the options and at least think if you were to do this, what these solutions are and then make a call for the person who really wants to come. For the person who doesn't want to come um, or at least is on inclined on the side of not coming convince yourself that this is a sore grape <laughs> because, you know, <laughs> uh, the, the, if you're going to, you cannot live your life with regrets. And if you know that, you know, where you are is a better experience and yes, that's the kind of person you are. So I think choose the kind of person you are and try to optimize the choices for the way you want to. Is there a question that you would have loved me to ask you? Well, I, I don't know if this is a question, but, but I, this is a thought in my mind, right? The grass on the other side is always greener. Yeah. So when you're in US, all you're reminded is like the Diwali celebrations with family and like yeah. the, um, the care that you have with your parents. And um, I think just like saying that, you know, I'm, I'm back in India, like I'm, I'm back to where I grew up. This is like the school I went to, like just the nostalgia and the memories. 
who when you're in India, you might be like, oh, I had lesser commute, lesser traffic. Things were much more straightforward. Like I didn't have to uh, stand in queue to pay bills. Well, yesterday you don't have to do it. There's phone pay, et cetera. But still like sometimes you have to go and get yeah. the process set up. Mm -hmm. um, there are, uh, there's a fear of loss of financial independence, um, especially if you were earning much higher in the US. So don't, don't make your decision just because the grass is on greener on the other side, like experience it. Like all, I always believe that if you could try it out for a short time, you will know the reality rather yeah. than hearing it from someone else and then make a decision for yourself. So instead of making a permanent move and then feeling locked here or there, try bungee jumping into different parts and then make the call for yourself. Uh, do you feel like uh, there is something, it's something that every married couple can do or it depends on the, you know, the relationship? It seems like marriage counseling to me, but, uh, uh, but um, again, the, the individual you are, obviously decision making is much easier, the more uh, entities uh, it is. Um, I think it's a tricky subject, right? Because uh, both of the spouses need to be absolutely bought in because think about the case where you force a spouse hmm. it depends on the spectrum if you're just nudging them that's okay because they will eventually come to terms if that's what they really want they would just needed that nudge to come out of the initial but if you're forcing them even if they are in india they might be complaining about it and yeah. your life may not be that happy and that might actually add to your regrets of like did i do the right choice of moving mm -hmm. back so just like understanding each other working out ways of honoring each other's responsibilities I think it completely depends on couple to couple but yeah yeah a lot of people fear about the clock ticking you know like oh um, for them the milestone is uh, crossing 30 then the milestone is having kids then the milestone is maybe 40 and they're like oh we can't move to India but my opinion is that you can move to India at any time like nothing should stop you in fact you should do you can do anything at any time in your life who says Agreed. Yeah, who says kids should stop you from pursuing what you want? So, as I said, right, this this is like the very first point. It's all about your mindset because for the same age, you can think of it as a reason or an excuse, right? If you are into your retirement phase, you can think of like, hey, I've settled my kids, let me move to India and like connect back with my roots. Or you can be like, I've lived so many years in US, like, are you asking me now to move back to India? So it's it's just the mindset and the motivation that you have for okay. any age obviously the complexities increase when there are more family members because now all their fate is decided on your decision but that is that is that should not be a blocker for making choices along with your family okay cool that was the end of the interview thank you so much kartika for dialing in and talking about your amazing experiences in a very clear and concise manner i think people are really going to benefit from this video uh, thank you, Nupur, for actually having me here and uh, for people to listening to my monologue. Uh, but I, I think what you're addressing is such an important, I would, I would even say existential question um, that a lot of us face. And so it's so interesting to listen to all of these different perspectives, get, learn from their experiences and also get some ideas that we could try. So thank you for addressing this really important topic and helping us connect with each other. Absolutely. Thank you so much.